Roger, sure. Greetings to, to you all. Philip Wasish, I am Philip Wasish. I was born in the Indian territory of my father, and I was raised there until at the age of seven, I was taken away to residential school. I was there in the residential school for 13 years, plus to two years at McGill University. By the time I came out of school, it was uh, in the early 1970, the James Bay Hydroelectric Project was announced in April 19. 71. I was taken by surprise by the announcement of the project since the people he, he knew of, Yushchi, were not consulted about this proposed hydroelectric development that was planned for construction within Yushchi without any accommodation, consultation with the EU USG. We were all taken by surprise. We learned about it through the media. People didn't have televisions in those days. People didn't even have electricity in their homes at the time. Early 1971. I got involved in this uh, And the events that followed the announcement of the James Bay Hydroelectric Development Project. I became the uh, one of the principal green negotiators of the uh, James Bay North Quebec Agreement. I am also a signatory of the James Bay North Quebec Agreement that was signed on November. 11, 1975. The year 2020, just to, on November 11, 2020, is the 45th anniversary of the signing of the James Bay North Quebec Agreement. It has been 45 years of Rebuilding the EU, EU, Inu nation of EUST, the restoration of the nation, the restoration of our rights, the restoration of our governance. This is really what nation rebuilding is all about. Why do I say that we have to rebuild a nation? We have to look back the way we were before 1975. The Indian Act applied to all aspects of our lives. The federal government governed all our, yeah, our affairs and business. Chiefs and councils more or less operated, operated like rubber, stamp, rubber stampers, puppets of the state. Because Indian Affairs the agents made the decisions. The federal government officials in Ottawa made all the decisions and governed each community. And they managed the band funds as well. The federal government also controlled all aspects of Indian education. The, the uh, education of Indian, of EU children, the history of the EU children education is a sad, dismal one because it involves the implementation of the Indian residential school system, which 
was really an instrument of implementing a policy of assimilation. It led to the what Truth and Reconciliation Commission called cultural genocide. We were denied our, our language, our dignity as a people. Our rights were denied as well before 1975. The most hunting season was not recognized for Aboriginal peoples. That is, we were not permitted to hunt moose during the winter, spring, as we do. The hunting of migratory birds was also illegal considered illegal by the federal government. So the annual spring hunt of migratory birds was illegal and the rights were not recognized. That is the right of you people to hunt at all times of the year was not recognized. Health, health and social services were exclusively administered by the federal government in the Greek communities. Most Greek communities didn't even have reserves, so-called reserves. There were no access roads. People didn't have water and sewage systems. Was one to be the people of was one to be Jesus and Ojibwe, Nemska. didn't have a place of their own. They had been relocated. The Ojibwe people lived in, in the camps within their own traditional territories. They had to be relocated because they were considered squatters and in the way of the mining development within their own territories. There was an exclusion of EU in the governance of the territory as well. A denial of the right of self-government was in force. There was the, also people who were marginalized and of course there was racism to live with. The James Bay Agreement was negotiated in a way that would enable the people to restore their nation and rebuild their nation. It's built on respect, recognition, restoration, responsibility, cooperation. Now we, after 47, 45 years of the James Bay Agreement, we have emerged as a strong nation and people. We have the protection of our rights, we are exercising our right to govern ourselves. We can hunt and fish and trap as a right at any time of the year in a manner that's consistent with the way we live. We have our own institutions like the Cree School Board, which didn't exist before the James Bay North Quebec Agreement as well as the Cree Health Board. So we now control and manage our own education, and health and social services. Children of the EU communities are going to school within their own communities. The school, Cree School Board have built secondary schools as well in the Cree communities that did not exist before 1975. 
The health board has built modern clinics that have not existed, and there is also a hospital in GCSB. Health social services have improved. Economic development is, has happened to a degree. There is clearly a, a sign of the emergence and resurgence of the EU nation as a result of it in Spain or in Quebec Agreement. I think our past leaders like the Grand Chief Billy Diamond Albert Diamond but, and uh, we, I think Robert cannot want Lucy Sam and a lot of other free leaders that have helped us on this journey for social distance, social justice, a journey of rebuilding our people our nation, our govern governance and our institutions. There has been vast improvement over the past 45 years. Our communities have housing. Not everybody had a house before 75. Now today, Every family lives in a house. Mind you, there's still some progress to be made in housing, and the creative leadership and governments are working on that. We have our youth councils, our elders councils as well, working in each community. I wish them well. I want to end this, this particular statement by telling people not to spoil what we have by desiring what you do not have. Just remember what we do have now are the things that we only hoped for before the James Bay North Quebec Agreement. Thank you, Ms. Comte.